Hello. Thanks for joining with me today as we gather for this special time of prayer together. Um, I, I was home the other day and saw my neighbor loading up his deer stand in the back of his pickup truck. And it reminded me about a time that I went uh, deer hunting a few years ago on opening day. And I'd wrote, gotten up very early and I'd uh, driven a few miles and hiked out to my secret place uh, underneath a tree that was in the edge of a meadow. And it was a place I'd scouted out a few days earlier and I found that this place, this meadow was crisscrossed with deer trails and fresh prints. And there was a hollow where a deer had bedded down nearby. So my tree offered a great sight lines to all of this and also uh, helped to conceal me. So. I went out early that morning and it was a cloudy day and I had to use my flashlight to, to find the tree and I settled down and I waited. And I, it was, it was quite, a, quite early, probably 90 minutes before sunrise. And there, were, uh, no, or there was no stars or moon. The, the sky was really cloudy and dark. And so it was just inky out there and it was quiet. Oh, so quiet. And the great silence was, was broken only by a distant train whistle. So after I'd settled down for a bit, um, the woods came alive, even in the darkness, and I could hear this deer. It, it came right out of the woods behind me, and I could hear it was walking towards me. It was still far too dark to see, but this deer was walking right at me. Me. I could hear each step. I could even hear this deer breathe. Now, like all good hunters, I had visions of this deer being a buck with this great set of antlers, uh, antlers and that, that this buck was only a few feet. It, it felt, it's, I'm confident, it was only a few feet behind me. I felt like I could reach out and just touch that deer. Um, but I could not see that deer. And that deer stood there for three minutes or so, quietly, and the, the, the meadow was quiet enough that I could hear the sound of him inhaling and exhaling. And after about three minutes, this deer just walked slowly away down across the meadow. Well, daylight came a little later, I never saw any deer, let alone that deer. So much for the tales of the great hunter that I am. But as I reflected back on this, I thought about how much this parallels my experience of God. Like this deer, there are times when I know God is here. I know God is here. I can't prove it. I don't have pictures. I don't have a recording. I can't even say that I saw God. And yet, yet, I am convinced that I have experienced God, that God was close enough to touch. And I'll bet, I'll bet that you've had experiences like that too. Thanks be to God who comes to us in the darkness and assures us of God's presence. Thanks be to God. As we move into a pro time of prayer, uh, as we have done in the past, I will uh, lead us in a pastoral prayer, and then I'm going to invite you to join with me, and we will pray together the Lord's Prayer. Um, as for a prayer request, for those in the church family, the Good Shepherd Church family, uh, we want to hold uh, Shannon Brennecke and her family in our prayers. Her grandmother died uh, last Sunday, and so let us pray for uh, Shannon and for Shannon's family as they mourn the loss of Grandma Josie. Let us pray. Gracious God, gracious God, it is so much easier to point fingers and to, to speak with horror about the darkness in the world 
than it is to live ablaze with light, bringing the colors of those around us, bringing the colors of those around us into vibrant life, warming the hearts of all we meet with compassion and your love. But we do not choose what is easy. We ask you to flood us with your light. Make us your light bringers into this world. It's much easier, Jesus, to, to separate ourselves from those who believe and act differently from uh, us, from those who look differently than, than we do, for, to, to judge them, to exclude them, and to preach about the bland lifelessness of our world. Much easier to do than it is to live with salty spiciness to preserve what is good and true and beautiful, to reveal the varied and exciting flavors of different cultures and people and heal and cleanse what is wounded and hurt. We do not choose what is easy. We ask you to fill us with your saltiness. Make us bringers of your spice into this world. We love you. We know that you love us. And because of that love, because of that relationship of our joy, we bring our joys and our concerns to you this day. We bring to you those things, trusting that you will work, trusting that you will encourage us, trusting in your love and relationship. Today, especially, we bring uh, Grandma Josie as those uh, in her family mourn her loss. And in the silence, we bring to you the cares of our hearts. Holy One, we celebrate your grace and truth, your compassion and giving of yourself, your justice and your righteousness. We offer ourselves to be among those who follow your ways, those who become light and salt, bringing life and justice and praise wherever we may find ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We close this time of prayer by praying together as we have been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thanks for joining with me as we gather to pray in this, this new way. As we go now out into the world, as we leave this time, let me send you with this word of blessing as we move into the world. Pour upon us, Holy One. May we be so filled with you that we cannot help but be your salt and your light. Let us go out in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. See you soon.